Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool. And in this video we're going to have a look at how we can use the add-on snap measure to create some CAD-like functionality in Blender. So this is my second video on snap measure. We just talked about the basic measurements in the first one. Feel free to go and have a look at that. There's the playlist link in the description, but it's not going to be really needed for what we're doing today. And that is how we can use snap measure beyond just measuring and turn it into something that's pretty CAD-like. Now I'm going to do one more part on this because I'm going to set a challenge at the end of the video and then I'll do another video talking about the answers to that challenge which makes this very CAD-like and you'll see that at the end. So let's get going with this. I've got snap measure and we're going to click start snapping and I'm just going to start with these two cubes, click and then click at that center point here so we've got the distance between them. Now, I don't like the names on mine, so I'm gonna turn that off. And we'll just up the font size and we'll up the size of the arrow as well, just so it's a bit easier to see on your screen. I might do the font size a little bit bigger. Okay, so we've got our line here, and this is line A. We do have the title for that there, and again, we can show that if we want to, but we don't need the names. I'll show you that in a little bit. And let's just offset the text a little bit down, just so it's a bit easier to see. Right, so at this point we are in object mode still, and we're not gonna to need to do anything with this. We've got our distance of our line, that's here, and we can tell it what to change the distance of, the start or the end, and we can put this up, but this doesn't do anything for us. In fact, it actually does the opposite of what we want and disconnects that line from this object. So I'm actually gonna undo that, so this is all undoable, but back here, what we want to use instead of this is our experimental tools. And we've got this option called object distance. And all we need to do is just change this and it will set the distance between the two objects. Or we can just type something in like four. We also don't have to have it just moving both. We've now got these options. This is sort of in beta version and I really would recommend getting this as rapidly as you can. I'll put a discount code up halfway through the video and that will get you 20% off until the end of August. So if you want to support this awesome add-on, please do use that and purchase it at 20% off and get commenting on things that might help to improve it. So as I said, we can do both, but we've got this easy to see option of we can do the start, that's just gonna do this one, or we can do the end, which is gonna do this one. And just as a reminder, if you're ever forgetting which is the start and the end from the last video, if you're in snap mode and then you press Alt, you can see what the start and the end is because you've got the green, which is the start, and the red, which is the end, and then your general selection button. So you can quickly see which one's gonna be which. So very easy to manipulate and control the distances of our different objects. And obviously you can have this snapping anywhere you want. Just to highlight this, if I hold down Alt, we could change where this is snapped to and snap it to the center of here, and then the center of here, and then now we've got the distance from center to center. And again, this doesn't change the way this works. So we can just jump this around as we want to. This is so useful for getting things at specific sizes. And I did mention this before, if I just come out of snapping mode with right click, and let's put those however far apart, let's call this eight. What I can do is say that I want an additional snapping point in the center, so let's put that on there, shift and D. And we've got a line now showing that as well. And the reason that I've got this line is that I've got this duplicate with measurement setting. So we get that line straight away, or I could unclick that so we don't have it. So there we go, and then Shift and D. So it's up to you which one you want. And then Control, Shift and V to come back into snap mode. And if I press Control, Shift and C, you can see the options at the bottom, Control, Shift and C. I can now grab that center and put it in that midpoint. So really lovely functionality. And obviously if we would have had that line from before, in fact, let's just come out of that and delete that, put our duplicate with measurement on, select this, and then shift and D so we've got the measurement, and then we can just drag that from the middle to there, and then we've got our two separate lines. And all I'll do is probably select my line B, which is gonna be that one, and I'll just move it down a bit more on the Z. There we go, and actually probably do the same for line A as well, just to make it a little bit clearer. There we go. So very nice, easy to use and manipulate. So I did say halfway through, I'd put up a code and this is the code. It was also in that last video. So this code will get you 20% off snap measure as long as you're buying it before the end of August. So let's carry on and have a look at this in another example. Right, let's hide all these 
and we're going to talk about one that's more complicated. Oh, I should mention we can also just hide these lines if we want to so that we don't have to see them. So this is my more complex object and we're going to talk about this in edit mode instead. So we're going to be looking at vertices. Now, just because we're doing this in edit mode or we're going to focus in edit mode doesn't mean we can't just snap these normally. So let's control shift and V to enter snapping mode. Again, we could just do it with a button there. That's entirely up to you. And we're just going to click from here to there. So we've got that distance. Now, in object mode, even though this is one object and we haven't done anything to make this more complicated, we can start manipulating and moving this. Now, at the moment, this is going to be annoying to find. I haven't got my line names on it. I could change that here by putting my name, so I know it's C, but I really can't be bothered with that. Instead, all I'm going to do is hold down Alt and click to select this one, and the selected line comes to the top. We've still got the other lines below it, but this makes this one very easy to find. I love the way that this has been so clearly thought through. So what we're going to do is fiddle around with this object distance and notice this might be a problem for us. It depends what you want. So if I start moving this, you can see this is stretching all of the object. All of these points are getting elongated, almost as if we're scaling it. Now, I do just want to come to the top here and point out that if I come to item, we aren't scaling this. So manipulating it this way doesn't affect the scale, so you're going to have no problem with doing things with scaling, which is really nice. But it is something to bear in mind that it will affect all of this. Let's just stop snap measure and undo that. What I'm actually intending to happen instead is actually just certain bits to get further apart without elongating them. I just want this central bit to be elongated. So let's just give an example of that. Now, once again, if I control shift V and hold down alt, I can see that's the start and that's the end. It's important to know which one it is. And what we're going to do is right click and come into whatever mode. Vertex mode is easiest. So let's say these vertices are the ones I want to move. Let's just select that. And then we're going to come down to here. And what we want to do is assign these as the start vertices. So there we go. And it tells us at the bottom four vertices have been assigned. Now, just for something a bit different, I'll select all of these this time. So notice this was just these four. So we're only going to move these for the start. This one, I'll do all of these and assign that to the end. Now, just so you know, what's happened here is in the background, we have brought in two sets of vertex groups, and that's how this is being affected. But it's such a simpler way of doing it. And we can always, if you wanted to, add vertices in the vertex group. But what I generally do is don't bother with that. I'll just clear it and then start again. I'll show you that in a second. So if I want to have this now, we don't use the object distance. If we're in object mode, we might use the object distance. But we want the vertex group distance. And if I start moving, let's just say the start, it will just move that. Or I could do the end and we'll move the entirety of the end exactly as we expected it to be, which is great. Or I could click both and it will move both. Now, in reality, I very much probably don't want it to be like this. Let's just undo that. I'm very much for the start going to want exactly the same selection. So all I'm going to do is click clear for the start, select those and click start again. And now once again, I can just move everything both in edit mode or in object mode, it makes no difference at all. So again, very, very nice CAD-like behavior. Now I say CAD-like because we have a lot of control over this, but we can't do certain things like weird semicircles and strange angles. So I'm not gonna say that this is perfect CAD, but we can do things with circles. So let's just show this and how we're gonna set it up and some of the other functions as well. Let's get rid of that selected line. I'm just going to, how will I do this? Let's just bring in a cylinder and I'm going to up this to something ridiculous like 128 vertices, which I would actually use fairly regularly because I do 3D printing and I don't want it to be faceted. So I need that. Let's just click there, control shift and minus. And because I press shift at the same time as control, you'll notice there's no modifier here. This has been entirely destructive. So we're going to set up another of these snap measure lines. I think of them as control lines. I know that isn't the term that the creator generally uses, but we're going to do it so that it affects the size of this hole. 
which note is a destructive feature. So what I'm going to do is select these top vertices. Now, at this point, with so many vertices, this is going to be an annoyance to select. I mean, to be fair, because I've kept this perfectly on the X line, I could know that it's that vertex and that vertex, but in many instances, I wouldn't. So we're going to use a different functional. I've got some vertices over there. We don't want that. What we can do is auto measure things. When we've got things like the max on the X, that is the maximum size on the X axis. I'm just going to get rid of that because we don't want it. But we also have this option for furthest. Now, what this does is tells us the furthest of the vertices we've selected. So I'm just going to make sure that these are selected there, just those, and then do this on the X axis. And there we go. I know this was a two diameter cylinder anyway, so that proves that it's working. But what's nice is it's automatically gone to those points. And there have been a number of times that I've used this and just quickly click this to find those vertices because it's so much easier. And I could do the same on the Y and just select a quarter really, really quickly without coming into an above view. Let's just get rid of line E, we don't want it. Now, if we come to this line, so we know this is line D, if we didn't, I could hold down Alt to check it. It has already worked out that this is a circle. So it said we want to do circular scaling. If for any reason that didn't work, we'd want to click that, but this is very good at recognizing this is a circle. And once again, we need to assign our vertices. Now for this, we need to actually assign all of them. We could just assign the top. Okay, so if I just click here, so this is where we do it, and assign circular, I could just affect the size of the top. But I don't want to do that, so let's clear it. And I'm just going to select all of the vertices there, and assign circular again. And now this time, even in object mode, even with a destructive circle, I can start manipulating the size. So suddenly I now have the ability to manipulate the size here, and also I can manipulate the size here. So a massive amount of control. I can't get over how easy this is to set up once you understand it. So I would say that this is pretty awesome. Now I did say I was going to do another video for this and that there would be a challenge. So here's the challenge and I'll give a couple of hints towards the end. But we've got four main measurements, at least ones that you can see. There are a couple of hidden ones as well. But we've got the Y direction and the X direction of this L shape. And anything that the Y direction is, the X direction is going to be five less. So at the moment the Y direction is 15, the X is 10, but I can just slide this and it will change it. So whatever the Y direction is, the X direction is five less. Then we've got our width of our L, and then we've got the depth of the L. And the depth of the L is always half what the thickness is. So again, I can change this, and it's changing everything with it. So we can pretty much now control everything from these two lines. We don't need anything else. Everything else is working with it. Again, really CAD-like. And if you want a hint about how to do this, and I will be covering this in the next video, my hint is purple. And then finally, if you want a mega challenge, it's exactly the same thing, but now we've got some pegs. And all we're doing with this is making sure that the pegs increase in height with our thickness. So if we just select this, we can change our thickness and the peg height changes with it. So they're always the right depth. But as well as that, when we change our length, the number of pegs increases as we need more of them. So that's a little bonus challenge if you want to try and make that work. So if you want to try that and you haven't got the add-on already, the link is in the description and that is an affiliate link. So a little bit of money does go towards the channel if you use it at no extra cost to you. In fact, if you use that discount code that was up earlier, you get 20% off. And finally, if you do want to support the channel any further or you're just really impatient and want to know the answer to this, this will already be up on the Patreon if you're watching this on YouTube because the Patreon is a week ahead of time. And also the Patreons get these videos ad-free and access to the Discord. Hope to see you in the next video and have a great day.